Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Sonic Movie Show, the only show that's about Sonic news, movie news, and Sonic movie news. My name is Ethan, and with me here to talk about Sonic superstars is Devin. I will release you from the chains of your past. Who the hell says that? <laughs> Shadow, I guess, from Sonic 06. I don't remember uh, that. I, that game was a blur. Remember when he kissed the woman? Yeah. I don't think I feel like the internet hasn't really gotten over that yet. We played that last year and it still feels like it was a decade ago, but also a month but you ago. know what? Maybe we needed that or Sonic needed that journey to get to where it is where he is today, when you think about it. That's true. We also needed uh Sonic Forces to teach us that we needed Sonic Frontiers. <laughs> Sometimes it's the <laughs> lessons, you know what I mean, that teach yep. us how to, teach us how to be better, you know? Absolutely. Um, but yeah, today's episode, we are going to be talking all about Sonic Superstars, as well as uh, some of the information about that. There was a Twisted Metal TV show trailer. Um, and then there I believe the... we have a, a little bit of news to do before that as well, before Sonic Superstars. So I'll let you kind of kick off if you have that information. Um, which news? Do you want to do the... <laughs> you wanted to do <laughs> the strike do... news before Superstar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So I um, just want to make sure we're on the same page. Um, so, yeah, the... For... Yeah, this was announced... Well, today is what? The 8th? Thursday, the 8th Thursday. of June. Um, and we, I remember we d talked about this back in... I think it was April when, when this was announced uh, that Sega... Uh, of America, I think specifically is unionizing or trying to unionize. Um, they filed with the NLRB to hold a vote to unionize. Um, and long story short, uh, they announced that they're actually asking for people to uh, do some signatures to put pressure on Sega management because they're putting pressure on the people trying to unionize by trying to interfere um, with uh the organization of uh of the mail out ballot the mailing ballots from the nlrb so basically mm. uh yeah june 16th if anything i'm just going to read this tweet verbatim here um we were disappointed that sega management has decided to interfere in our democratic right to organize leading up to the nlrb mailing out our ballots on june 16th this is at uh takes a e g i s agus um which stands for a long acronym for their uh union um but if you go on their Twitter, you'll you'll find more information. But they said instead of living up to Sega's values of quote respecting our employees' right uh, to organize for labor management consultation, management has initiated a campaign in response to us exercising our rights. We call on management to cease their anti-union campaign and be neutral. Uh, and they said, as a Sega fan, we ask you to retweet this thread, which we did. Sign a petition to management, uh, which I did. Uh, and then they said, continue playing the Sega games we all love. Um, I know sometimes uh, when union votes are happening or strikes are happening, uh, sometimes people who aren't part of the strike yeah. who are working there try to like organize or help organize, which is fine, but you should always listen to what the people who are actually trying to unionize right. want. If they were saying, hey, don't buy Sonic Superstars or don't pre-order it as a message, I would hope people, Sonic fans would follow through. But they're saying, hey, continue playing the Sega games uh, you love. We're not asking people to boycott. So I think that's important to distinguish that. Yeah. Um, the boycotting is often like a knee jerk reaction people have online because they want to do they mean well, and they want to do something. So it's like, oh, right. yeah, we're not going to buy, you know, whatever game or not going to go see this movie. But it's like the people you want to support made that. <laughs> so they do want it seen. They do want it played, but they might not want, uh, you know, Sega, for instance, to just assume that, oh, these people are they don't care, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, by the way, so they're they're full. The the Aegis uh, acronym is uh, Allied Employees Guild Improving Sega. They're hoping to join the the broader union, Communications Workers of America. Um, but yeah, you know, it says on their web their one uh, Action Network website uh, where you can do the sign up for the petition. There it says we are the workers behind the U.S. versions of successful franchises like like a Dragon. And persona, uh, in the interest of delivering the best quality products to our fans, we are organizing to have a seat at the table to improve our working conditions. So, um, I'm not going to read the entire uh, 
a statement that you can sign, but would recommend folks do it just to help them support, uh, get, uh, get that support. So we'll see what comes up of it. Um, pretty disappointing though for Sega, uh, for doing this. Cause I think at first, when it first came out, it sounded like they were going to like, let it happen. Cause there's some places like Starbucks who will fight every, every franchise, for example, of, you know, trying to do union busting or not even allowing strikes to happen, firing people and whatnot. So hopefully they're not doing that, but still like you always hope that there's allow... the company that just says, "All right, just do your vote," and then they sit back. Yeah. Like, but I feel like we don't really ever get any that are like that, right? Maybe I'm wrong. I can't think of yeah. an example of a company that actually meant it when they said, "You know, we respect our employees' right to vote, and we'll just see. Hopefully they vote no, because obviously the company doesn't want them to vote no. Employees obviously yeah. do want to unionize, so that's what should happen." Ninety nine out of a hundred times, the company will fight for fight against it in some way or try to influence people in some way. Uh, I know from my own working experience, there's, you know, maybe it's an email. It could even be as simple as that an email being sent out being like, Hey, remember that this company provides the best benefits in the area or, you know, we, we always strive to have competitive pay or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, we'll keep following it. Um, but yeah, make sure to follow them on Twitter at takes agis, a E G I S. Um, yeah, I hope I hope they do, uh, get there, get, get what they need and, uh, Sega stops Agreed. being lame. <laughs> yep. Well, but. we don't really want a lame Sega, do we? We want a, a nice Sega. I mean, we're in happy pride. We're in pride month. We're two straight white men, but happy pride nonetheless from the Sonic movie show. Um, <laughs> from my understanding, uh, Sega, the Japan Sega, um, you know, the main Sega branch, main Sega corporation is probably the earliest earnest lgbt friendly company like well before 2013 with the legalization in america of you know um of uh, gay Gay marriage marriage. and you know like well before it was you know well before rainbow capitalism they were known as a company in japan at least um, that was like non-discriminatory had their employees backs with that stuff so like when they tweet happy pride it means more than starbucks or whatever yeah you know what i mean whatever like it means more than the yeah, companies like that when starbucks say says happy June. pride i'm sure they've fired a gay person for organizing in the right. uh, in the workplace you know what i mean <laughs> so right right um, um but so yeah when it so like i would just hope that the company that is progressive in that sense also like is good enough overall to be able to meet the needs of their employees and for whatever the the unionization um, contract would end up being, hopefully in the favor of employees more so than Sega. Hopefully Sega has, I just, I want it to work out because like it's, I feel like it's very rare for there not to be a corporate grudge over just for the rest of, the company's life you know what i mean of like we were fucked over and now now we're mean you know what i mean like i i don't know i i want it to work out for them um because they deserve it i mean i think uh maybe it's not the best example in a different way um but like blizzard how like mm. like with diablo coming out and whatnot and like people are still like yeah but remember what you know all the stuff that they've had issues with that hasn't really seemed that they've really done anything about it seems uh maybe i'm mis or remembering uh, but uh um, my to my knowledge it seems like they kind of just let that pr fire just go yeah, out or mm. at least this waited waited it out um which is what is how it always goes with like these kind of things unfortunately which yeah. is most most companies will just be like worked fine waiting it out unless it's like yep you know Unless there's a boycott or something Speaking involved, briefly maybe, about but... Diablo, did you uh, see Whoopi Goldberg on Instagram was railing against Blizzard because she bought Diablo Four and then realized that it's not a Mac. <laughs> she has a Mac. Oh, and she says, no. "I wanted to play it. <laughs> Diablo's my favorite game, and I can't play it on my Apple." Blizzard Entertainment, please let us play. I'm on surprised the Apple. it's not on Mac though. You know what Three I mean? Three was. Like... Three was. You know. I was gonna say. I feel like Blizzard usually has. Yeah. 
Matt pretty good Klein versions yeah yeah um so that's surprising maybe it'll come out later like a year later or something but speaking about activision blizzard another a- famous activision property which feels more like a sony property is crash bandicoot there's like this weird multiplayer moba crash team rumble thing and uh now they have a new character it's like a bat thing and oh it's it's non-binary or it's something um like oh it's the first you know non-binary character in crash and um, someone I follow on Twitter who does investigative reporting and has specifically done a lot on Crash and Spyro said, uh, yeah, um, uh, Activision fired the people that created that character. <laughs> they no longer work at the company. So, <laughs> you know, like they, they waited until now because it's Pride Month and they get to be like, look, we, ha- we, we know what yeah. the one flag means. Here's a bat <laughs> that is like, you know, they have that behind them. So, you know, buy our game. You know what I mean? We don't give a shit. Yeah. Um, so, but let's talk about something. <laughs> Rainbow fun. capitalism, indeed. I was, that's all I'm yeah. gonna say. <laughs> yeah, yeah in, in, indeed, indeed. Um, not to be confused with woke capitalism. Rainbow capitalism is its own special breed of. <laughs> no, I mean that because it's, un- like, it's under like an umbrella. I, I feel yeah, like you know yeah, part yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> Rainbow capitalism is specifically the put shit on products because we know more. You know, LGBTQ people will buy the products, then the people that hate them will not buy the products. <laughs> so or we it's know just, we'll net, it's not we'll even that. And also, I just think it's like, know. it just go like, I've always said I feel like America is socially progressive for the most part. Uh, granted, the last couple uh, years maybe haven't <laughs> shown that, anything, but it's more of our the governments rather than the people, the actual people who live here. Um, uh, I feel like it's a little bit more that just like the general audience of people will just buy that kind of stuff or be generally interested in it, whether or not they're, you know, LGBTQ or not. Even like, there's, you know, of course there's allies too who like to buy all that kind of stuff as well. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, we used to live in an era where commercials on TV could really rapture a lot of people and rapture not not literally rapture in rapture, rapture a lot of people <laughs> um into buying their products by having zany wacky commercials but we're used to that so much now so like i forget what it was but there was something where like the company did something accidentally progressive and it got a lot of attention and it made a lot of other people so mad that they made a lot of content online of flushing stuff down the toilet and stuff like that and that is now like the new commercial in a way you're going to see a lot of people that are like, I fucking hate my Keurig. I'm throwing it out. Fuck you, Keurig. You said something I don't like about people that I don't want to acknowledge exist. And, you know, and then the people are like, yeah, fuck yeah, because Keurig didn't back down. They said, fuck y'all or whatever they said at the time. You know what? Right. I kind of do need a coffee maker. That's like the new commercial in a way. We're like, that, yeah. that, that's rainbow capitalism, I feel like, in, in a nutshell, is that <laughs> performative commercialism. You know what I mean? Um, speaking about performance, speaking about commercialism, speaking about <laughs> having something speedily delivered to you to make you happy, but what may or may not be just a ploy to soak money out of you. Let's talk about Sonic Superstars, uh, the <laughs> new hit game by Sega. No team announced for this one, because I think uh, there's some rumors we it's can a secret. talk in about as well. It's a secret. Um, it's yeah, Sonic It's going to be someone Superstars. we never thought of. It's going to be like Bungie or something. <laughs> That'd be pretty sweet. No, I mean, to get real <laughs> quick into it, we have the trailer running on YouTube, so watch us on YouTube. If you haven't, watch the trailer first. You'll mm-hmm. have audio, because I'm not pumping audio into this. Um, <laughs> the rumor for a while is that it was the Sonic Mania team who was working on this game, and Sega didn't like the contract with them or whatever. There was something going on mm-hmm. on that end, and Sega basically axed it all. Um, uh, T. Lopez, or T. Lopes, I-, I assume his last name is Lopez, but it's like with an S, so I don't know, because um, I've been reading his name and calling it Lopes. He is, is a really good um, uh, composer, and he did Sonic Mania's soundtrack. He also did, like, the Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge soundtrack um, for that game that came mm-hmm. out, like, a year ago or whatever. Does a lot of good, like, um, music uh, in retro stylings that feel very poppy and catchy. He had tweeted a few weeks ago basically confirming that there was a Sonic 5 and that, like, you know, a certain studio basically got fucked over um, because Sega didn't want things done 
you know, not for cheap or whatever. So this game is like kind of in somehow born out of it's like Sega's attempt at just like, all right, we're going to make a Sega, a Sonic five type deal. Um, but yeah, Sonic superstars was announced at the game awards today is the day of this recording. Uh, Thursday, June eighth. Summer or er, Summer Games Fest. You said the Game yes. Awards. Same difference. I said the Game Awards but... because it's Jeff Keighley. I'm sorry. And usually Jeff each Keighley's Summer Game thing. Fest, <laughs> he talks about the Game Awards, like oh, because he owns them all or whatever. Um, summer Games Fest was announced pretty early in the show. It was a nice big pop. It looks like it is an entirely uh, uh, 2.5D. I don't really like that term. It's just 2D with 3D graphics. Side-scrolling Sonic game, classic Sonic stylings. Obviously, you guys have seen the trailer. You know Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy are in it. Um, classic Amy, you know what I mean? And not a modern styling. Although, if you pre-order the game, you get uh, a modern Amy uh, skin or outfit. I don't. The pre-order should be Rouge the Bat. Honestly, but. I've been saying it for a while. I think I've said it on an episode of this show. <laughs> but the next 2D Sonic game, I could have sworn was going to have Shadow in it. Like a side scroller with yeah. shadow, you know. But no shadow still. Shadow's been kind of he's been uh he's been unlocking key a little bit. I know. And Ru- Maybe, put the, Rouge the bat in there, you know what I mean? Put all the friends. I mean just, for, it's a it's, lot of friends. I'm just saying like Rouge the Bat would instantly give you at least a million copies, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'm not uh, on the marketing team, so you know what? If that's okay. So this game is sixty dollars, hundred dollar collector's mm-hmm. edition. Gets you rouge the bat. The only way to, to play her. This is hypothetical. The only play. Would you, would There's you nothing be, else would with it. it. It's just rouge the bat. Right. Would you do it for the bit? Yes. Deep down, what do like you mean, off, bit? off this. What do you mean, for, bit? Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, I mean, of course. <laughs> you mean bit? I thought, like your birthday's coming up. I bought so much rouge the bat merchandise. <laughs> I was gonna fly to Colorado dressed as rouge the bat. Rouge the bat. <laughs> and knock on your door. All right. Oh, no. damn. I mean, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> um, no, but it, it's at least nice that it isn't just the typical Sonic and Tails. You know what I mean? Knuckles is in it cool, and Amy's in it cool, because obviously Sonic Origins all plus his, DLC all his main is friends. adding in Amy. Um, classic Amy design. But yeah, I, I think we're both in agreement that we both really like, you know, old styling Sonic, his shorter, chubbier. Um, I like the lighter blue, like too. Self. Yeah, I saw some people on tw- Twitter doing uh, like edits to it. Like he's supposed to be dark blue. It's like no, I disagree. I, yeah, light blue. All right, I like it. Oh, he just he has more retro that way to me as well. But For I sure. guess to be fair, it's I softer. feel like this is much more like, uh, you know, it's supposed to be more like the like you said Sonic Five. It's like the old games rather than a Sonic Adventure and whatnot. Which yeah, I guess aesthetically is maybe you need a taller and more uh he needs uh, to have legs that are a meter and a half long in order for me to consider it canon um yeah yeah (laughs) well you remember obviously there were sonic one two three and sonic and knuckles were kind of combined with three as one general package but then many years later um dimps was contracted to make sonic the hedgehog 4 which was episodic two episodes and the games were bad it was really weird wonky they tried to go for like the um the donkey kong country or um uh, new Super Mario Brothers aesthetic of pre-rendered backgrounds and like either pr- most of the characters being pre-rendered with like maybe the main character being uh, three-dimensional um, but I think Sonic was also just a bunch of pre-rendered sprites and it, a weird like ugly look to it that also does not scale in higher resolution so it will look 720p like forever unfortunately unless they do like a remaster game was bad and obviously we know sonic mania was sonic mania and that's probably a true sonic 5 in that sense but that had a lot of um uh, remade levels and concepts so like if this is all completely new like i hope it is for 60 dollars, it better be um then this may seems more of a sonic 5 with like new abilities um i don't know if you read the full it says brand new adventure so yeah yeah that's what i'm hoping then oh it's hard to tell like you see, uh, you know, Green Hill Zone inspired worlds in like every free- single freaking 2D Sonic game. And I see like the giant robotic, like red sea creature eating the thing behind. And that makes me think of like Sonic Heroes first level, 
seaside hill which also felt like a green hill zone type of thing so some of it blends together like if you told me no that's green hill zone i'd be like okay i buy it you know what i mean maybe this is tiki sunset zone or something i, I don't know but um <laughs> it comes as you can see on screen to uh current gen consoles nintendo switch and last gen consoles as well as steam epic game store um which is cool they showed fang uh the sniper who is a weasel i believe he's a weasel briefly at the end there and also check the, the sniper he sh- shot jfk <laughs> check the beginning of the trailer before sonic runs into the fully remade thing fang pops up on the left there on the side he pops out on the, on the edge there so they they tease it at the beginning of the trailer before uh before he pops up at the end comes out fall this year it is 60 dollars. there may or may not be dlc um because best buy had the game listed for 70 dollars, and sega had a correct wario 64 on that so perhaps there is a a deluxe edition because remember Sonic Origins had that like five dollar more digital deluxe edition which gave you like music you can listen to off YouTube for free. I think there was normally. a cosmetic, maybe yeah, or two. Yeah, something weird. Um, what do you think about I'm just this? More, I mean, overall, I was kind of surprised. I was not expecting any. Like we were, we had an episode planned to record tonight uh, that had nothing to do with. Uh, we actually just did a news episode, so we weren't really planning on doing another news episode. But having this be announced, you know, we we had to do it. And I, I yeah, I was not expecting a new Sonic game at all this year. If there was going to be one, I was expecting okay, it's just going to be another one of those like ports or something, or maybe there's yeah. some new bundle. Well, I, fi- I like honestly they do I figured that every the Sonic year. Origins Plus DLC thing was the Sonic thing for this year because Frontiers right. might get DLC. Um. But. I mean, we know uh, Frontiers is getting DLC. We don't know when, but they right. had a roadmap, um, and that we know that sold very well. Um, if not, maybe the best it sold for a Sonic game in a long time. Um, so yeah, yeah, this is interesting. But I think this goes maybe. Uh, I wonder if this was part of like what was it like a year or two ago where it was supposed to be the year of Sonic. Every month there was going to be something new yeah. Sonic related. I wonder if like with COVID and all that being delayed that maybe this was supposed to come out um, last year with Sonic two um, Sonic movie two just to yeah. be a big push. And maybe just things got delayed. And if the rumors are true of there being like contract issues or whatever it was, um, obviously that would cause delays. Um, yeah. But what this, I guess visually reminds me of is that one, uh, I didn't play it, but that one Zelda game where it was like a remake of an oh, old one, if I remember correctly, yeah, yeah, yeah. where it has that, new stylized look to it made him look extra cute uh link yeah that Link's is awakening. Um, yeah link's awakening i feel like yeah. this is the same vibe even though it's yep. new but showing that like hey we're going from like retro look to this new look it reminds me a lot of that where like that was how they advertised that game i remember um so yeah. i guess from like a visual component if anything this this seems more interesting to me than like the Sonic Origins Plus, I never got that. Um, that was one of those Same. things that, like, if it's Same. if it's on sale, maybe. But like, I already have a couple of the other Sonic games on Steam or on Switch already. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm curious uh, about this one. This one might be a good Switch game, if anything. So I'm kind of glad this we'll one see. is on um, last gen. Um, yeah. But because I feel like this would like, be a fun like travel game. I'm I'm on you know on the airplane or whatever. Yeah. You yeah. know, I need to burn some time. Sonic the game is a good way to burn some time. Like that, um, yeah. uh, graphically ambitious. Like mm-hmm. it. So th- there's clearly like some minor cutscene type stuff that happens in levels, like right before a boss. They, there's a screenshot, and like it's probably ripped straight from the trailer of like um, Sonic and Amy standing in front of uh, a boss, and the camera is clearly a cutscene camera because it's zoomed in and angled, and the ground texture is very low resolution but that's because that's what you would see when you're playing the game and it's running past you and it's zoomed out so it's fine but that's one of those things where it's like all right in your last few months of release because this comes out in the fall um that's one of those things where you tighten it up a little bit if you can on like the ps5 and the xbox series x and they definitely could um probably on all the consoles except maybe base ps4 xbox one and the switch you know in moments like that replace the texture with a higher resolution version of it that type of stuff and i'm sure the switch version will run at 30 and and whatnot but yeah i don't see this game as being uh next gen only by any means like 
if like anything, about it is that this crazy. makes sense but it looks to have. Really good. I was gonna say, um, yeah, it looks. It like I said, it has definitely a little. Um, I have it has a cuteness to it. Is the best way to describe it. I do like the color palette. It feels both Sonicy, but also just a little bit more fresh. Um, if anything, it has the Zoomer colors. You know, a little bit, a little more vibrance to it. Sure. Um, uh, when I mean Zoomer colors, I mean just Fortnite. Uh, <laughs> it has that Fortnite. But, uh, <laughs> um, but no, I feel like I'm glad this one's next gen. Um, and not like I still think Sonic Frontiers should have been maybe next gen only to make that game because from my, what we've heard is that like on switch it was not great uh yeah. to play yeah so and here's the thing but for these kind of games 100 percent, 100 percent. like sonic yeah. can be that multi-platform uh dude you know like uh you know but at the same time if i think Sonic, i think i hope the next sonic frontiers if they're doing a sequel to that or keeping that same level of uh of uh, level design uh, that I hope that one is next gen only. Um, but stuff like this, this should always be on all all platforms. I think. Yeah, yeah. There are always ways to um, make your to downgrade your games in uh, good, tasteful fashion. You know what I mean? To make it run on a variety of platforms. Like, there's a lot of cross gen games going on right now, and it's not. We're no longer in the period where no one can buy a PS5. Like, there's a lot of PS5s and Xboxes out there. It's more of the like, well, number one, if this game was coming to Switch, then why is it not on PS4 and Xbox One? Because they're they're more powerful than the Switch, so they sh- it should there should be versions on those as well. But also like. Not a lot of, of, of games, uh, even the big next gen ones, are doing things that the that the last gen couldn't do without just graphical and performance downgrades. You know what I mean? Like if you want to spend the time to downgrade, you know, your game to make it run on PS4, like Horizon and um, God of War, for instance, like those games hmm. weren't doing the Ratchet and Clank um, style of you really need this SSD. Like God of War and Horizon Forbidden West, they run perfectly fine on PlayStation 4, and they made compromises to make those games still look good on those systems. You know what I mean? Like, we're at that point now where, like, it just probably. And there's an argument to be made, and I saw, I don't know where I saw it, but someone was talking about how, like, Nintendo, and even though I'm a Nintendo hater, usually. um, (laughs) A Rouge lover, Nintendo hater. Put that on your Tumblr. Yeah. Don't talk to me if you're a fan of Nintendo. <laughs> right, right. Um, but I saw somewhere where it was like Nintendo, the reason like they can always sell well and whatnot is one because they polish their products. But like they're not worried about having next gen graphics. You know, that they they found that Microsoft and Sony are gonna battle it out with like having the next gen graphics, making it so realistic. We're we're at the point where graphics I feel like like are good you know, like great enough. Like I'm sure they're going to get better in like 10 years. We'll look back and be like, wow, PS early PS five games look ugly now or whatever. Like, you know, you, your memory also helps too. Like I've always remembered, uh, some games that I played in my childhood to be a lot better visually looking than they actually oh, are now. Sure. If you look yeah. back, um, so I'm sure we'll have that effect still, but for like game like this, like it's not about realism, right? So you can just, yeah, you know, get a good aesthetic, get a good frame rate, get all those things, and you have a usually you'll have a good, well played game. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, and you hope the game is fun and all those other factors that go into yep. a good game. But uh, I think it's like why Nintendo, I think, always sells so well and whatnot. It's because they polish their games and they're not looking for like making a realistic Mario, so to speak. You know what I mean? Right. Um. So. And yeah, I think games I think it's still a good look directions. really good all the time. You know, Mario Odyssey was a good-looking video game. Yeah, there was a lot of technical stuff like, oh, in the New Donk City area, people in the background move at like half frame rate. You know, they run at like fifteen or something like that. Way in the background, and some elements disappear. It's like one of those things but where it's, it's like all game. those compromises are done, and yet Mario still moves and and super fluidly, and he's awesome. And you know, it's, it's a, a video. Really good thing. To me, it's like yeah. I think. If, if, as long as it's you know you remember it's a video game like yeah the point where we have video games look like movies i don't know if that will be good you know what i mean like like i like the it though, at the same thing. time they could end up making less playable games and i don't think it would hurt their reputation but i still want no i'm glad last of us part two was a fun video game to play 
I was actually surprised at how much I liked playing that game. I was sold on the graphics yeah, and the story, yeah. but there could be. It shouldn't that be the only. Future. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be the only thing. Like yeah. part. That's why part of me is like, man, I love Last of Us Part Two and whatnot. Like visually and like the color yeah. palette of that game. I've talked about that plenty of times. Uh, every time we've talked about gameplay or uh, visuals in games, um, that's like one of my go-to. Like I love God of War. I loved God of War Ragnarok and uh, like the visuals of that and. But of course, like it's a video game still, so you're you're not gonna have you know perfection. And you, I don't know if I want that at the end of the day. I go back and forth of like, like I like I was just saying is like I don't know if that'll be good because if you're making it too much like a movie, then it's not maybe not might not be as fun, or they're spending too much time on that, especially with how expensive games are now too. So yeah, but yeah, we're kind of digressing a little bit, but yep. uh, yeah, I just wanted I'm to bring happy up this one exists. Theory. I guess. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt mm-hmm. you. Um, no, I was it. I was just. Oh, okay. I'm well, happy I, it I cut you off a little bit too early. I'm sorry. Um, you brought up, oh, you know, because I, you're like, oh, I think uh, this might have been announced when they want to do an announcement every month for the year of Sonic for its 30th or 35th. And it was 30th at the time, um, anniversary. My theory, because this game is coming out this fall, means it was clearly worked on before. And I know, like I, like I was saying, there is that rumor about. Um, it's now evening star but the studio the team that made sonic mania was was allegedly working on a sequel or a new game or whatever and this kind of was born out of that um i have a feeling that this game was planned for that but it was going to be an early like tease type thing like our first sonic frontiers tease was just like what does this even mean and if you remember like that rendering and animation style of sonic in that trailer is different how Frontiers presents itself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, even then, there was still a... a, a it was, that game was still early enough that they might not have had that fully nailed down of the tone and, and you know, and, and how we present Sonic. So I feel like this game would have been the same way. Um, but, yeah, like... Because they, they had multiple announcements planned. Like, they said afterwards, like, yeah, we, yeah. We, had a bunch, we have a bunch of stuff that we want to announce, and this was probably one of them. Um, the Sonic Origins thing was probably another one of them. So, I mean, I'm there excited. was the Sonic, you know, Netflix show and all that too. Because like when they first announced it, I was thinking we're not going to get Paramount. like obviously a new game every month, but it was going to be a whether it was a comic book line or a web series or a TV show. There was going to be or those kind of things, cool merch, and not like yeah, or merch. or a hey, we have a new game coming out in the fall, maybe. Every month up until that point, we're gonna show like more in depth look of 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 it, kind of like how Sonic Frontiers was. Um, you know, with there being a gameplay, then they like I think it was like a world's trailer or whatever it was, um, story trailer, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. I was gonna say this ain't the only thing Uh-oh. Sonic related that that might be coming out in the fall. What is? Well, so maybe I don't know how much we we should put stock into this because it's been the only uh it's been the only source and it's it is someone who's in the show to some capacity and also did a song for sonic movie 2 it is uh kid cuddy i guess our favorite rapper by default um for the show um sure. because of his work um but he's he tweeted out on june 7th so uh yesterday he said, officially wrapped on Knuckles with three exclamation marks. This was easily one of the illest experiences I've ever had on any set ever. <laughs> Which is, I mean, that's good. It would be bad if he was like, it was like the worst experience. Like, do not work with Jeff Fowler. Um, but no, that's great. Uh, you will love what these guys have created for you. I'm so proud of what we made. Knuckles coming this fall. That's the big thing at the end there. Knuckles coming this fall. Um no one else has announced it. Sonic didn't announce it. I'm not sure if he was allowed to announce it. Granted, he didn't delete it yet, so maybe they don't care. I mean, that's what he's been told. I could still see it not being the fall because of whether it's uh, writer strikes or whatnot happening. Well, uh, it's already written. <laughs> to be fair, they they probably shot it all by now. Yeah, that's true. But um, if what he's saying is true, or rather like... Uh, I don't, like I said, I think it could be true, but like we don't, I don't know how involved he is in the post production process that they could turn it out by this fall. Um, but uh, yeah, 
still regardless if it is coming out this fall it's a lot earlier than we thought i know we said like i think early next year was like our prediction if i remember correctly around there because we're like at the, the movie comes out the movie comes out next not this december but next december so um we thought that would kind of like be a good like build up to it or at least yeah. gap to fill in but still good news regardless so maybe if anything that'd be probably good for them to have this game come out superstars to come out when knuckles show comes out because i always feel like that's just good cross promotion in the sense even if they're not directly yeah. connected but just being like my kid loved the knuckles tv show and there's a new sonic game out next time i take him to walmart better go get it yeah or rather i think it's bucks. the kid <laughs> or rather the kid watches it uh and then keeps yelling at his mom to buy him the video game. The new Sonic games I want to play is Knuckles. Um, yep. <laughs> but yep. And I hey, here's another okay prediction. Um, by the time uh, the Knuckles show comes out, the Sonic Frontiers DLC where you can play as new characters, which is probably Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, will be out. I guarantee it. Around there, yeah, for sure. Or at least that's what they want. Whether or not they can that's the know, goal. finish it by then, but that that I bet guarantee. I'm sure, that's the yeah. goal. Yeah. Okay. We have so uh, that, yeah, one more news. bit of news. Um, I feel like we're gonna get claimed, so we're not gonna show the trailer here. But uh, Paramount Plus's TV show that comes out next month, <laughs> Twisted Metal. I believe yeah. it's a short, uh, like I don't know. I think it's maybe six episodes, something like that, starring Anthony Mackie. Samoa Joe slash Will Arnett as Sweet Tooth. Um, sorry, Hell Samoa yeah. Joe Sweet Tooth, baby. plays the body of of Sweet Tooth, but Will Arnett is the voice, which I'm sure that that's actually that's gonna be tough to film. Samoa Joe so being a wrestler for those off. that don't know that, and that's something I've always wanted to happen with Batman. Have Kevin Conroy rest in peace. I know he died of fucking COVID, if I, if I remember correctly. Um, I've always wanted him to voice a live action Batman. Just fucking do it. Have the balls. I don't care who it is that plays the body, but have, you know, so that's, this is that idea. Like, you know, Will Arnett is voicing Sweet Tooth. I'm not going to lie, Devin. Mm -hmm. Didn't care for the trailer. I thought the humor did not hit. I feel like they (laughs) thought it hit. I don't think it hit. I feel like they thought, we'll take a scene that's meant to be a little funny and we'll just play that as the thing. So it's not really a trailer. It's just, here's a segment of the damn show, whatever episode it's from, probably the first one, maybe, maybe it's towards the end of the first episode. Um, because I have a feeling now it's a, whatever, whoever Anthony Mackie's, cause I think it's the original character, whoever Anthony Mackie plays and sweet tooth are like teamed up. That's what it sounds like at the end there, um, that they're like, at least going to work together. Um, so I feel like that was the first episode. I get. I, I feel like they thought, oh, we'll just have a snippet of an episode be what we're going to show at, at Summer Games Fest. And, like, that'll be a big hit. But I'm missing a lot of context. I'm missing a lot of the characterization of both Sweet Tooth and Anthony Mackie's character. Like, it might have hit more if we saw more of Sweet Tooth beforehand. Because I didn't find that man funny. I also didn't find him imposing or threatening. You know what I mean? I honestly, it looked like Anthony Mackie's character was feigning uh, fragility and just being thrown around. Like, I feel like, dude, you throw a punch and that clown's going to fall over. That's, I don't know. Maybe I'm being way too harsh. I want to know what you think. (laughs) I mean, uh, yeah, I've never been a fan of like using like a scene to advertise a movie. Um, At least it's never worked for me. Even like uh, a good example of this is I remember uh, I forgot what it was in front of uh, what movie I was seeing it was in front of, but uh, for Godzilla King of the Monsters, um, which I love probably probably my top five Godzilla movies, right? But like for the advertising of it, um, at one of the movies I saw, they had like a thing where they're like, "We're going to show you a minute clip from the movie." And like they, just, so it wasn't a trailer. So they showed like the part where King Ghidorah comes out of the ice and Godzilla's there and they're about to fight. And that's when it cuts, right? And like, I was like, that's cool. But like, I feel like it just didn't gel because you're just showing yeah. no context. That's what makes trailers it. good because 
Right. They provide yeah. context with cuts, and they also right. like, like, yeah. Every single one of those always falls flat to me. Uh, always and like, you know, I'm sure him coming out of the ice was not a spoiler because you knew he was going to be in the movie, but like. That would be a cool thing not to have spoiled. And, like, granted, you were already going to see the movie, so they are trying to get other yeah. people that weren't to go see it. But I, f- I feel like that strategy never works out. I feel like it never works out. Um, because it's not – I feel like also – It feels more awkward. There, I don't know why, but I think it's that missing context I think it's that because, it. I think it's because there is no additional editing touch-up to that segment's sake of being placed wherever it's being placed – in like a you know instead of a trailer like it's almost always just the raw cut of the final product there like and and maybe it's an alternate you know line read version um and then they change it because sometimes it happens in trailers but like it's never it always feels like yeah we just cut it at the 36 minute mark and then at the 38th minute mark and now slap it up on the super bowl (laughs) Hey, are you having fun? Right. It's Transformers: Rise of the Beasts or whatever. I made that up. I don't know if they did that or not. I don't. I don't watch football. But um, yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, what What do you think though about what you saw? <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know anything about Twisted Metal. Like, I had for Same. us too. I feel like it was kind of a bit that just it's sweet tooth. Like the <laughs> yeah. he's like a Joker, but like not as cool. So like, yeah. I think that's what I like about him. All is I that know, it's like <laughs> all I know is that like. As far as Sweet Tooth is concerned, whoever wins the Twisted Metal tournament or whatever gets a wish. And Sweet Tooth, if I understand, is like a serial killer. And like, and I hope it's, well, obviously it's fiction and it's meant to be, you know, fucked up. If I'm understanding correctly, one of his victims, which may or may not have been a child, got away and his wish is just so that he can kill them. And that's what it is. Maybe I'm wrong. I, that's literally I all I know. I had I, Twisted scene, Metal Black on PS2 play. or whatever when I was a kid, and I yeah. played maybe five hours of it because it was kind of hard for me as a kid to play. Um, I can see that. My other thing is if you're going to pull a scene from this, it's a f- driving game. You should have pulled stuff from that. I get maybe they're trying to set up like how these characters meet or interact with each other. But, like, hey, maybe show this later or don't show it at all and save it for the actual show where there's more context and maybe this scene hits more. Um, As iconic as Yeah, I kind of wish it was just a regular trailer with with the cars and stuff. Yeah, I mean, his truck is almost more iconic than him. It's an ice cream truck. That's why he's called Sweet Tooth, you know what I mean, or whatever. Maybe maybe it's not. I don't know. I've I've played less of Twisted Metal than you. Maybe have I mean it sounds right. I believe you. Um, <laughs> but you know that's just always what I assumed. Oh yeah, and he was the first. Uh, his character model for um, uh, Sony's attempt at a Smash Brothers leaked, and but because it was really zoomed in, like it was a Divin development thing, and it was really big, people assumed it was a regular fighting game, and were upset when it was a Smash Brothers clone because he was really big on the screen. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it was Sweet Tooth. So that's. I think that might be the first time I've ever really seen him. So like I'm I'm a poser. I'm not a but it's a fun idea to have made as a thing. Will Arnett seems like he was paid to say he had a fun time with Anthony Mackey. <laughs> I'm always against these like uh celebrity videos and the things where it's like, Hey guys, yeah, you know, I'm just chilling here against my white wall. <laughs> I was, you know, I'm in this movie. You're I don't want to show off my giant it. mansion that I have. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, here's my my uh, my my Coke Zero energy drink. You know what I mean? Check me out. Like when the Rock did it yeah. like four times last year. I always hate that because it never seems like they're interested. The the person I don't know if you, you didn't watch all of Summer Games Fest. The only person, only celebrity I've ever seen, and this includes. Um, this includes even when Vin Diesel came on to talk about Fast and Furious Crossroads at the end of a Game Awards. Rest in peace to that game. You can't buy it digitally anymore. Um, yeah. The only celebrity that has ever felt like they actually care about the game that they're in or, you know, TV show, movie thing that they're in for the sake of conveying it to the gaming presentation audience was at this Summer Games Fest when Nicolas Cage came on to talk about Dead by Daylight and how he's in it, 
And oh, he, I didn't know he was there. I have to watch. He was I there, clip of that. and his drip was pretty fucking good. His, his drip was good. His wood. Okay, I don't use that word lightly because I'm white and 28, but his drip was good. <laughs> um, he actually talks like he fucking knows the video game more than he was just briefed on it. Like oh, he, he has said, a. I like the emerald suit, he, but he still fits with the video game. Yeah, check like, his shoes. Corporate. You got to look at his shoes too. Oh, are they black. They say they're black. black shoes. There's some. Yeah, some, there's some I, I just liked it. It was like okay, cool. That. It's better. It's than, simple, you know, but he fits. He fits works. with yeah. the. It fits with the yeah the video game corporate world of like wearing the yeah a black or some sort of t shirt underneath the the jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I I think I have Dead by Daylight somewhere. I got it for He's free. I think a survivor. Um. But then they show gameplay and I'm like, wow, this game actually does not look visually good at all. <laughs> it looks it's a little uh, clunky i've seen people it, it play it it's a little very clunky. clunky and like his animations like because he's talking about how like um you know he's never been in a video game before he also by the way he mentioned that no one ever approached him for video games and i feel like shame on you you know video game industry yeah. for not even attempting yeah. because like you don't know who will say yes give me wheel I bet man he would have say yes give me wheel man with nick cage Sa- same fucking game but it's nicholas cage Dude, he gets to Cage's do all the same man. lines. Make a Wheelman remake, and you replace. And we love Vin Diesel, but replace make, make Vin a Diesel. Fuck it. Have Vin Diesel's character be in it. Have it be called Nicholas Cage's Wheelman Two. You know, <laughs> which implies awesome. there was a first but one, including the air jacket. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He because it was uh, I don't know whatever. But um, uh, Nicholas shit. Cage is on the talk about like you know, and, and this is all new to me. This video game world and and every every action you do. Um, uh, has to like be immediate and and replicatable by the game, um, and I'm thinking he's talking about like the gameplay aspect. No, he's talking about him as a as an actor for whoever he's playing. All of, like the, <laughs> the size and then grunts and like there's a term, there's a voice actor term for that, like action. Some I forget what it's called, action effects or something like that. But like all that has to be split second because it's going to be used, and there's got to be so many of them. And every motion I do has to be you know, represented, and then they're showing gameplay of him, and it, it could have been anyone that, that he was... Honestly, having not really seen that game at all, gameplay-wise, I've just seen, though, the Silent Hill and the this and the crossover stuff, just in terms of images. You could have told me that was just generic male character model running animations and just motion he does to like come on guys but you know i don't i don't know if it if he has unique at least he's in it because like yeah like for example mortal kombat 11 had the terminator and i was kind of disappointed they didn't have arnold schwarzenegger actually voice him they had his look and everything but it was like a probably someone of his someone his publicist or whoever his agent probably got someone who could you know impersonate him enough because it's fine but you could tell it's not Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger, and I get well, Arnold's like how older Tom too, Hanks's but brother still. plays Woody in every non-official Toy Story uh, thing, like the Disney Park stuff. Like it's Tom Hanks's brother <laughs> who does a good Tom Hanks impression. Speaking about Mortal Kombat, you know how like um, I don't know if you know Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat all that well. Johnny Cage is like a guy who's like in movies, and he thinks he's, yeah. he's in a movie, but he's actually in the Mortal Kombat tournament. That's the the reason why Nicolas Cage is in the game. He thinks he's on a movie set. <laughs> But he's not, so that's, that's hell yeah, like, that's that. great. Like, oh. Um, yeah, so that that's that that's not. Dude, I want to say Nicholas Cage, the Nicholas Cage rebound. I am so freaking here for. I know, right? Uh, you got Mandy. That was really good. Is that why um, that is over there? I thought yeah, that looked familiar. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, that's I mean like I think the rebound. Mandy's Mandy was start of the rebound for sure, but then there was uh, um, the unbearable Colorado weight space. of massive. Oh, and then that one. Unbearable way of massive talent with Pedro Pascal, which was one of my favorite movies from last year, easily. Um, just so good. If anything, I need to watch it again soon. Um, but yeah, the dude's like back on the up and up, um, kind of, you know, because I think at one point it sounded like he was kind of low, low on money a little bit, or at least that was the rumor. And that's why he was doing a lot of like weird one off things. Uh, but we've always been fans, you know, as a kind of a meme back when it was a meme, but like, He's back, baby. I think. I think he's. I think he's back to the. Yeah, yeah. Back to yeah. that. Uh, that threshold of you know. Of being a tier, he's a tier to me. So. <laughs> or however how it works in actors, whatever the rank. How do you do? You just get 
changed? Do you, do you get to pick when you're changed in the tier ranking? How does that work? Because I know there's like all the different like A rank uh, A list or whatever it is actors, oh, and then there's the B list. Just, like, how do you change just, in that? Who, that's who just votes mag- on that? That's just magazine, not even magazine. That's like the do you think they those meet? little tiny magazines that you see at grocery stores? Yeah, like the those little tabloids. gossip ones, tabloids. That I guarantee that's where the A list celebrity shit. Because there was, I don't know one. if they all come to a meeting every like July. Yeah. And they're like, okay, guys, it's time to do our power rankings for. And actors. it's gonna look like every time there's a serious action movie that does like the different computer monitors of the people staying there, like Fast X, mm-hmm. best Fast and the Furious movie. I will fight people that argue that, but like that scene <laughs> was really bad on how they do that. It always, always rubs me the wrong way. Like. They can't. Ah, uh, it's so dumb. But yeah, um, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Nicholas Cage, good. Twisted Metal, we'll see. We'll see. It could, it's probably not going to be good because I feel like Sony would be tweeting more about it if they really believed in it. This kind of feels like a yeah, Ratchet if... Clank 2016 thing where it's like when we get close to the movie, it's a lot of Sony's not really doing much of the marketing. It's the animation studio because Sony's like. Eh. We're gonna cancel that Sly Cooper game movie. Like, eh. You know. Any case. But we ain't gonna cancel Nicolas Cage, that's for sure. No. I god, I hope we don't have to cancel Nicolas Cage. I mean, shout out to Dead by Daylight, because like they've been around a while and like there's been, you know, kind of I wouldn't call them ripoffs, but other games like it, like Friday the thirteenth today announced that they're being they're I'm pretty sure that game done. came out before Dead by Daylight, but you know. Same, same really? thing. Really? Yeah. Dead by Daylight has been on, I think, since like 2015, 2016, if I remember correctly. But same it's been a thing while. with Friday the 13th. It's really old. But I They're around the same time. But like Dead by Daylight's the one that really like got those kind of cross promotion stuff. Um, I think more times than not. I think they have like, yeah, they have a Stranger Things they've done. I remember they did, uh, uh, I think they did Halloween maybe at one point. I don't remember all of them, but. I've always seen a couple people play and talk about it, and I think I have it. I think got it for free. I think on Epic Games or something like Probably that at one point. Somewhere. Um, yeah. But hey, maybe maybe I gotta get in there with Nick Cage one day. It depends on how much it's gonna cost. <laughs> if he's like a thing, you. I'm really sure have to he's like a lot of ten bucks. Buy. I'm sure yeah, he's like probably like ten bucks. Probably. I feel like, like those kind of games are always like each hopefully character. Hopefully, it's is not $10. like some sort of season pass thing where like. Oh, if you don't buy it now, like a Fortnite thing, or you're just not going to get it any, or not season pass, but battle pass bullshit. Yeah. I mean, Abolish the battle pass. Better. Oh my God. And the fact that games use that term like, as if we just all like it. I don't think anyone likes the battle pass. People like the idea of getting free st- stuff in the game that wasn't in there prior, but they don't like the idea of needing to play all the time. We're done with the episode. We're not going to talk about battle passes. <laughs> so this was a fun episode of the sonic movie show hey while you're here because you're on youtube right now because you wanted to see the trailer cropped uh zoomed out and muted uh, while we are underneath it talking about the trailer you're on youtube <laughs> hit the like button hit the the bell or whatever subscribe us subscribe to us you know at sonic movie show on youtube as well as on twitter instagram tiktok and the like um, hopefully you see some of our shorts on YouTube, also on TikTok and on Twitter. Yeah, go well. watch those shorts, especially if, uh, you know, if I know we're, shorts... we're us millennials, I was gonna say us millennials and zoomers, you know, like uh, the, the joke is that we recommend podcasts to each other until we die. That is true. Um, but maybe you can't, you don't want to recommend a whole episode and just be like, Hey, I'm not going to send you a whole episode. Cause that sounds like a lot of homework. Just send them a clip, just, just send, send them a 60 clip. cent clip. Be like, there's, they got yep. time. They have 60 because seconds guess to be what? like, we need 10 million shorts views in order to start monetization or a lot of hours <laughs> on regular videos. And we're probably not going to get that. So just just auto play the freaking clips all the time, please. Thank you. <laughs> the shorts. They, they take a couple seconds out of your day. It takes us longer to make them. And, you know, we have to see yeah. and record. So, you know what I mean? Um, editing podcasts <laughs> is not fun. Uh, instead of us bitching, um, we're going to tell you, say thank you guys for watching. You probably listen to us also on a bunch of uh, podcast places like, you know, Libsyn is probably not where you're listening to it. But Apple Podcast, uh, Amazon Audible, Spotify, that's the main one. I was going to say, yeah. I was going to say, I feel like you missed all the big ones there. Whatever. You're you're doing things. I'm on Pocket Twitter. Pocket Casts absolutely. or whatever. <laughs> Deezer, Devin's on, on Twitter at Cursona Fun. 
Um, let us know what you think about Sonic Superstars. Did we miss anything? I forgot to mention that um, it seems like getting Chaos Emeralds actually gives you powers in the game. Like the ability to go up the waterfall is because you got a Chaos Emerald. Ability cool. to ride a horse. Yeah. So if you missed anything, let us know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, we're going to see you next week. We are probably going to be talking about Sonic's characters, friends. Goodbye.